By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Alex, and Alex is from Russia, Moscow. And we are playing according to the Atlantic old school magic rule set. So that means one strip mine and fallen empires. So I'm looking forward to be me playing some fallen empires in this matchup today. Uh, my friend Alex is bringing a counter burn deck to the table. And this one is a very aggressive version of counter burn. And I'm playing against him with my Atlantic brew Talit Taxes. Now, before we are going to the game itself, I'm going to do a short deck deck. Now, if you'd like to go straight to the match, like always, you can find a timestamp in the description below. Click on a timestamp and it'll take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue with the deck decks. Alex is playing with counter burn and he's playing with the aggressive um, version of counter burn. So he's playing with four flying men, four surrender befreats, four mistress factories. He's also playing with four black vice, hoping to deal some early damage with those black vices. They're almost like extra lightning bolts if you can if you can uh, get them on the board on turn one. Black vice turn one, that means your opponent is taking three damage uh, if you are on the play. So that's that would be really good for Alex. And basically the idea of this counter burn deck is let's get the game done and finish with as soon as possible. Just get everything out of the hand, play everything out, deal as much damage as you can. It's kind of like a sprint towards the finish, a 100 meter sprint. The only problem is when your opponent is not dead in those first four or five turns, then it starts to get difficult for this deck. So that's when I see um, a possibility for my Tally Texas deck. So it's going to be my goal to kind of survive the first four or five turns and then try to build something. Now the reason I'm showing you this picture of Wheel of Fortune is because these aggro decks can run out of gas. And once they run out of gas, their best option is or blue power in the form of Time Twist or Ancestral Recall, even a Time Walk can help, or by simply drawing into a Wheel of Fortune, which is basically going to have the same effect and that is giving you new cards. And if you have new cards, you have new fuel and you can deal extra damage. So basically, Alex wants to finish the game really, really quickly. Let's see what I'm bringing to the table today. And this is the deck that I am bringing to the table. I'm playing with Talit Taxes, and that's referring to the card Land Tax and the Talits in this deck. So Talit is a crit creature from Fallen Empire. It's one green, it's one one. And during your upkeep, you get a Spore Counter, and you can take three Spore Counters off to make a 1-1 one, one, um, Soprolling Token. So you can basically make little 1-1 one, one creatures with this. And the idea of this deck is uh, all I basically need are one or two mana. So I'm just going to try to play out my Talis very early, playing out, uh, you know, my my land techs, not doing much myself, just waiting for my opponent to play more lands, taking the lands out of my deck. And of course, what's very important in this brew are the three Armageddon. So Armageddon goes great with land techs for obvious reasons, and it also goes great with low casting cost creatures, because hey, I only need one mana, I only need two mana, and I can just start playing out these low casting cost creatures. So the tactic of this deck is, is, is quite simple. I just want to play out all my little one ones create this little army, then kind of play an Armageddon as soon as I can, basically, so that my opponent cannot really do anything anymore, use my disenchants mainly for the mana rocks of my opponent, so I'm gonna play them on a lot of Moxen in this game. Again, Swords to Plows here is, uh, because of its low casting cost, is, is perfect, ideal for this deck. There's nothing in this deck with a higher casting cost of four, and that is for the simple reason that an Armageddon is costing four. I mean, I would have loved Armageddon to be cheaper, to be honest, because besides Armageddon, nothing costs more than two mana to cast. So it's an uber cheap casting deck. And you might wonder why is he then playing with three Lunderware Elves? Well, that is still a bit in the test phase, to be completely honest, but obviously the Lunderware Elves works just great with Armageddon and great with land text. If I play an Armageddon, I will still have my Lunderware Elves to provide me with mana. And if I have a land text out and I don't want to play a land because I want my opponent to be ahead of, of the land drops, at least I have mana from the Lanoir Elves. The interesting thing with this deck, by the way, is the casting cost of my creatures is so low, I can just not drop lands. I can just do that and it doesn't really affect um, me playing out spells because my cards are just so cheap to cast. So overall, the idea of this deck is quite simple. I wonder how it will do against you know the the very powerful spells in the counter burn deck obviously i do have some tricks up my sleeve i have that city in a bottle two of them 
in my sideboard, I think they're going to be very useful in this duel against Alex. Okay, so that's enough about the decks. Let's go to game number one. Game number one, and Alex, the player from Russia, is sitting on the left here with a pretty cool play map, by the way. What does it say? Time something? Is that bomb? Does that mean time bomb? The card from blue? It says Russian 93, 94. Maybe, Alex, if you're watching this video, you can let us know what the play mat is all about. It looks very spacey. And uh, I'm sitting on the right, of course, with my Timmy play mat, playing my Talit Taxes deck. And if you enjoy this deck, there are a few more matches of this deck on the channel. So if you're interested in that. Oh, and look at that opening from Alex here. Black Vice turn one. That means that I'm getting three damage without even having played a single spell. And that is exactly what Alex wants here. Playing a Talit, and Talit is that 1-1 one, one creature that I talked about in the deck tech section of this video as well. 1-1 one, one Fallen Empire for one green, and during your upkeep, put a Spore Counter on the Talit. Remove three Spore Counters and get a 1-1 one, one Suprolling creature. And there we see another Black Vice, so that means two more damage for me, because I believe I have six, do I have five cards? No, six cards in hand. So actually going to get more damage and also, yeah, so I'm taking four damage from the Black Vices and also we saw a Chain Lightning also on me, so that means I'm already on 10, pumping my Talit here with the Pendlehaven and playing a Javelinier, so also a 1-1 one, one creature from Fallen Empire coming into play with a Javelinier counter. And I can tap and remove the counter to deal one damage to any target. So it's kind of, it's it's perfect against Flying Man in this in this um, matchup. And there's the Surrender Perfreet taking two more damage from the Black Vice. I need to get rid of that Surrender. Okay, playing a Fungal Bloom. Fungal Bloom is an enchantment from Fallen Empire. I can tap two to put a Spore Counter on a creature. So basically it's gonna help me make uh, Suprolling Tokens. And you might wonder why is he playing his Swords to Plowseers now? Well, the reason for that is that Alex is playing Counter Burn. Counter, so he's tapped out. So I don't want him to have two blue mana open. So that's why I'm playing that Swords. Uh, earlier and there we see a flying man so I can start using my javelineers to take out the flying man if I want to and actually doing it now I think I should have waited until he attacked but maybe I'm afraid of an unstable mutation and I'm playing an Armageddon and this is exactly what I want to happen aye, aye, aye. but we see a mana drain on my Armageddon attacking here for one and he's going to 18 and at the end of turn I'm making a Suprolling token. So the Suprolling tokens will be that little white uh, tokens that you see. So the see-through tokens or the regular tokens and the white ones, they represent a Suprolling token. Ooh, and there we see uh, Psyblast 4-4, four, four. so I'm on 4 life. I'm incredibly low here. And he, of course, takes two damage from his own Psyblast, Blast, and this is this is dangerous. I mean, I can deal some damage, but this is going to take a while. I need another Armageddon, playing a Lantex here, attacking for three now, pumping, so dealing four damage in total. That means he's going to drop to ten, and this is this is very risky. All he needs is one more Psyblast. Blast. Luckily, I'm still, yeah, you see me crossing my fingers there. Luckily, I'm still on four, so that means that a lightning bolt or a chain lightning is not enough. And end of turn, activating my fungal bloom to put an extra spore counter on that tally. That means three spore counters already. Now, remember, if I take them off, um, the new Suprolling will have summoning sickness. Attacking again for three with that pump option, dealing four damage again. That means he's going to six. So this is actually going pretty quickly. So maybe I can snatch a victory here. End of turn, making another Suprolling token. And passing turn here to Alex. Alex needs a Psyblast now, or at least a creature to stop the pain. And he finds a creature in the form of a Mishra's Factory. End of turn, putting two more uh, Suprolling, sorry, Spore Counters on the Talit, attacking with everything I have. Remember, he has to block well, I, he doesn't have to. He's on six, then he would go to one, I guess, if he lets everything go. But I'm waiting for him to activate, and then I'm going to activate my own Pendlehaven, most likely. 
So let's take a look. Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, activating the Pendle Haven on the creature that he decides to block. So that means that creature is going to get plus one, plus two. It becomes two, three. And that means that his Mishra's Factory will die. And he's going to three. And I'm playing another creature. This time a Savannah Lines to make matters worse. And step, taking the three Spore Counters off to make... Uh, a Suproling. Okay, I guess he's playing a Spell Blast on the lines. It doesn't really matter that much. I mean, he's on three. I'm on four. What can actually save him? Okay, and I guess I guess nothing can. So this was game one. I really thought that after that start from Alex, he would uh, be able to take this game. We are going to our sideboards. I am definitely going to board in those City in the Bottles. And then um, then we'll see what's going to happen here in uh, in game number two. Game number two. And, uh, well, that was unexpected. Nice victory there. After that quick start by Alex with that Black Vice and that Chain Lightning, you know, being down on, what was it, 10 or something after the first two turns, I thought, you know, this is not really going to work. But I managed to stabilize and take the victory. And that means Alex gets to start here with a Volcanic Island. And it looks like a Mox Ruby and a Flying Man turn one. At least not a Black Vice, playing a basic plane, so that means not a Talit for me. And I wonder if I have a Swords and if I'm going to play a Swords. Playing a Batland, so that means he must splash Black, and there's a Mind Twist immediately, answered by a Swords. But I'm going to lose two cards here, this is not the best start for me. And he's picking the cards. And I just have to discard two basic forests, so that's not too bad. And interesting here that um, in his brew, Alex is splashing the two powerful black cards, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. Makes sense, they're very good. Not a lot of fun, but they are very good cards. Playing a third basic plane, so I guess I'm really missing those forests that I lost uh, because of the... Mind Twist. Obviously, Mind Twist not the best combination with Black Vice. And let's see, playing a Savannah here, tapping for two, playing a Disenchant on the Mox Sapphire. And there's a Counter Spell on the Mox Sapphire, followed by a Regrowth on the Disenchant. Interesting. I mean, you know, Alex doesn't need a lot of mana, so I'm not sure. I guess. By targeting the Mox Sapphire, I just want to target his second blue source so that he cannot counter. And maybe I have an Armageddon in hand that I want to play, for example, passing the turn here. Probably keeping my Disenchant for his end step. End step casting that Disenchant. Will we see another counter spell? There is another counter spell. And another Disenchant from my side. Okay, I'm, I think he's taking the wrong... Playing a Tsunami here, I think he's taking the wrong card. I'm not disenchanting the Black Vice. I'm disenchanting the Sapphire. And now I'm playing a Tsunami, so this card came in from the sideboard. Because obviously he plays with blue, so that means he has no blue mana anymore. Playing a Factory here. Playing a Javelineers with a Javelineer counter. But that's not going to help me when... Oh, there's a quick lightning bolt on the Javelineers. And I think that's a good decision. Because Javelineers, when it doesn't have summoning sickness anymore, it also uh, gives me the possibility to block the factory, tap the Javelineers, kill the factory that way. And also it's just an instant killer of Flying Man. So there was that Sword to Plowseers on the factory. Playing a new Javelineers. Let's see what my opponent is going to do. Is he going to play another Bolt on the Javelineers? And this is important. There is a blue source. He has three mana. That means he can play a Surrender Perfreet if he has one. And that would mean a big problem for me. Going through his cards and decides to pass turn you. So I guess he doesn't have a Surrender Perfreet. Let's see what else I can do. Step four here. Again, destroying his islands. It's only one island, but... I mean, it's so important because when he has access to blue, he can start casting his Surrender Pafrits and his Flying Man. And of course, he gets counter capability back online as well. So I want to prevent that. There is a Chain Lightning taking care of my Javelineers and passing turn here. 
at least my Javelineers has kind of prevented six damage. It's also a way of looking at it. Oh, and this is important here, that city in a bottle. Remember, that means that no cards from the Arabian Nights expansion can be played. So if he has City of Brass, you know, and of course his Surrender Befreeds and Flying Men, he cannot do anything with them. He cannot even play them out. They're stuck in his hand. Playing a strip line here, taking care of his Badlands. In response, there is that Shatter. That is not great for me. But at least he only has one mana source, that red Mox Ruby. Ooh, finding a Soul Ring. This could be important. If he can now find an island, he can start playing uh, Surrender Befreeds. And I'm not doing all too much as well. And there's an island. Ay, 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 Flying Man. It's my turn now. Having to pass turn again. And it looks like Alex is back in the game. Bring me down to 19 here. Passing turn. What can I do? Tapping. Okay, tapping five. An Armageddon. So I guess I'm floating one land. I have two cards in hand. I guess he's... Yeah, he's playing a mana drain. He's countering this one. I've got one mana floating, playing a planes, two mana. Oh, city in a bottle. And because he countered the Armageddon, I could play out the city in a bottle. And that means that Alex is stuck once again with his Arabian Night cards in his hand if he has them. Let's see what he can do. Tapping a blue, it seems, for something. He's playing a Cyblast, probably going to tap a Sol Ring then as well, I assume. It means I'm going to 15 and Alex is going to 18 here. And let's see, drawing a card. Tapping the Savannah, there's a Talit. And at least I can make a 2-3 with my Pendlehaven, so that's not too bad. I'm showing him my empty hand, nothing left. And he's drawing for turn. And it looks like he's doing nothing, just passing turn. That means I can put a counter on my tally and attack, pumping it to 2-3, dealing 2 damage. That means he's going to 16, and I'm playing an Elvish Farmer. An Elvish Farmer is actually the most expensive card in the Fallen Empire expansion. It's an O2 creature, and what it does every during your upkeep, you can put a spore counter on the elvish farmer and for three spore counters you can make a saproling and you can also uh, choose to sack a saproling for two life but it gets destroyed by alex immediately with a lightning bolt which i understand i mean elvish farmer is is a very scary card i get it a very scary card but in all seriousness it can give me life and life gain is a scary thing when you have a counter burn deck because you don't want your opponent to gain life, because that's like going backwards in time. Anyway, pumping my Talit here, dealing two more damage. Alex going to 14. And I think I think that City in a Bottle is just really, really a big problem for Alex at the moment. Because he's not playing out anything, so his hand must be filled with, with Flying Man and Surrender Befreeds. Tapping five here, playing a Fireball. Probably going to deal two to the tally and two to me are just okay I guess just one passing turn here I mean what it does basically he is he is buying time which is good he's buying time because he wants to probably draw into his other shatter I don't know with how many shatters he plays or what he sideboarded in or out you know to take care of the city in a bottle maybe he boarded out his shatters because he didn't see a single artifact in the first game there's a Talit from my side. Oh, and here he tries to play out the Surrender Befreed, pointing out that even though it's a revised reprint, it still counts as an Arabian Nights card. So it cannot be cast. And he's going through his graveyard again, probably looking at the amount of burn spells he has played. And yeah, I just wanted to mention he can just untap those manas. And there is a Spore Counter on my Talit, attacking for two here again because of the Pendlehaven pump, playing another Talit. And I mean, he's on 12, and if it can hit him for at least two each turn, then he's on a six-turn clock. 
playing a brain geyser Ooh, that is a dangerous card to see being played against you and i wonder i wonder if that can get him back into the game i mean i think yeah i think this is a good move taking care of that pendlehaven and what i wanted to say is if he can just find a shatter and take care of that seed in a bottle he can start playing out his big creatures again and he can still win this game. I mean, he's on 10. It's not that bad. Playing a Fungal Bloom again. The Enchantment that can put Spore Counters on my Talits. Let's see what's going to happen next. A nice Underground Sea there. Always beautiful art. Passing turn. Untapping here. Putting the new Counters on. That means I can get some Suprolings here. And taking the first batch off. Actually deciding not to, I can probably do it in his end step as well. I don't have to do it in my turn. Playing a Javelineers, and that means even more pain on the table for Alex, who is still looking for that Shatter. A Factory would also help at this point. Just something to block with would help. But it looks like he cannot find it. End of turn, putting an extra counter on the other Talit with the Fungal Bloom. So that means more Suprolings for me. So having two 1-1 one, one Suprolings ready to attack. Attacking for 5 here. That means he will drop down to 3 life. Look at that. He is on 3. I can actually, I can maybe win this one. I mean, what can save him? He would need maybe an Earthquake. Earthquake would be great here, actually. Playing a Psyblast and he's... Okay, of course, that means... Well, he's not killing himself, but that's basically end game. So, wow. So, it's um, it's 2-0 for me here. And uh, we actually played a third game. So, if you, if you want to, you can now continue to watch game number three. Game number three. And I do feel that um, Alex was unlucky there in that uh, in that second game, finding uh, facing two city in the bottles in one game. Look at that flying man and a chain lightning. So it's a pretty good start for him there. I'm already on 17, playing my playing my javelin ears again, showing it to him. I mean, it's just a perfect card against these one one creatures. But there's a quick lightning bolt, and that means that my javelin ears is gone, and I'm taking a damage. Another flying man. And a maze of if. So look at this start. And I guess I have to yeah, start using my swords. Which is not really what you want to do. And playing the Savannah Alliance. At least having something on the table. And taking care of one of the flying men. Going to 15. Hopefully um, I'm trying to stall this game. So that I can draw into. Or an Armageddon. Or another city in a bottle. And he's attacking again, going to 14 here. And there is a disenchant on the Mox Sapphire. And he's allowing it. So obviously I don't want him to have three mana so he cannot so that he cannot play out a surrender befreed. And this is number four. Taking a little risk here with the arm again. Can he counter it? And yes, he can. That's very unfortunate. That is very unfortunate because I want to not just get rid of his mana producing lands, but also I want to get rid of that Maze of If. And this is going to be difficult for me playing a Talit here. And Camera of Alex seems to be a little shaky. Attack me here, going to 12. And I need another Armageddon to just get rid of all those lands. And then I'm pretty good and I'm pretty, pretty safe. I'm not attacking because of that factory. Taking more damage. Going to 11. Putting another counter on. Now remember, my deck has zero flying creatures. So that flying man is actually pretty powerful against me. I just need a Javelineers to shoot it out of the sky. Or another Swords. Or I need a City in a Bottle. There we see a City of Brass being played by me. And a Swords on the flying man but we see a counter spell i was probably waiting for him to tap down with mana but it just took so long and now i'm deciding to play a balance with no cards in hand my balance is basically 
a mind twist and it's funny to see that he's actually discarding his two black cards and I have to throw away a land and a creature. So deciding to do this because I want him to discard his uh, his hand, wanting him to discard those two cards that he had. And I've already used, I think, two swords to plows here, so I believe that's what he's asking. And if he plays the Surrender Pafrit now, it's going to look very, 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 very bad for me. No, he's not doing that, at least attacking with his factory. And I'm allowing that damage from going to 8, also knowing that next turn I have enough counters to have a Suprolling token that I can use as a blocker. And I don't want to take the risk that he can somehow kill my factory. But in hindsight, I believe I should have blocked with the Pendlehaven and taken the risk. I'm blocking now and using the Pendlehaven, making it a 2-3, so I wonder what trick he has up his sleeve. Oh, okay, so actually I think he probably forgot about my Pendlehaven. Yeah, I guess he forgot about the Pendlehaven. So, I mean, that's lucky for me, at least taking care of that factory. But I am on 7. And he's sending one back with his maze, of course, and then I'm pumping the other. So it doesn't really matter that much. And playing out my other Pendlehaven. And playing out a Lunawer Elves. It's a bit of a strange play. I'm not sure why I'm playing out that second Pendlehaven. I mean, it's better, especially when you have an Armageddon deck, to just keep your, your lands in your hand, especially since I've already discarded the Mind Twist, but okay. Doesn't, it's not going to have a huge effect on the game itself. Playing out another creature, but I need a solution for that Flying Man. I mean, I can deal more and more damage now to, to Alex, but I am on six. So I'm on a six turn clock, but I guess if I can deal more damage to him. Oh yeah, we were kind of talking about the life total because we didn't really know if he took the damage or not, and, and when, and what, and where. And I believe, yeah, I believe we decided that he's on 14. I'm not sure if that's right, so maybe if you're watching this, maybe you can let us know. <laughs> we were playing this match, uh, I believe it was Friday night, so we weren't like super focused. And let's see Alex attacking here, so I'm going to 5. I mean, I do have some turns. My hand is empty. And of course, what's 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 difficult for him is um, that he only has two mana available. So if he has a third source, he can start playing Psionic Blast, he can start playing uh, Surrender Perfreeds. I mean, if he finds his third mana source, then it's going to be very, very tricky for me. And I'm going to draw, hopefully draw into something to take care of the Flying Man. Preferably a city in a bottle. I'm attacking now with everything that I have, pumping one of them. That means he's going to get 4 damage. So it's going to drop to 10 here. And... Yeah, he's going to drop to 10 and I'm playing another Talit. Will we see a counter spell? There's a spell blast. Okay, that works. Spell blast is actually a pretty efficient card against my deck because my casting cost is so low. There's a Batlands and a Sayani blast. That's it. That's game. I well done, Alex. Well done. I, I think you deserved you deserved a victory as well. You deserved a victory. I mean, you know, you were so close to previous two games. That means that this matchup ends in one against two, a victory for Tally Taxes. Uh, and I think a big thank you to my two city in the bottles for for giving me that uh, that second game. Interesting matchup, interesting to see. And I'm actually I'm pretty happy with my Tally Texas deck because it's it's you know it's such a it's a fun deck to play with, but it's it's based on a very simple um, simple idea. And we're now showing what we boarded in and out. So I boarded in my Circle of Protection Reds too, I believe, and I boarded in my city in the bottles. I believe 
my opponent. It looks like he, uh, what's the name of that card again? It deals one damage to target creature or player. And if it's forced to be discarded, it deals five damage to the opponent. So it's really nice when your opponent is playing the him rack deck, for example. And that's a great card to have in your deck. Okay, so this was it for today. Thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, uh, well, I, I guess you already did by watching this video. You can like it, you can leave a comment, you can click the notification bell, that really helps a lot. You can share these videos on your socials, that helps as well. The more, the merrier, you know, I'm trying to, uh, we're trying to make this channel as big as it can be. Uh, and make old school magic as big as it can be. Uh, for now, thank you for watching. And we also have a Patreon page. So you can also support the channel financially. And if you'd like to do that, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. And talking about the patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll and see who the patrons are of Timmy Talks. Ich bin ein